pity is that they don't un they don't begin to understand the Arab world. I want to read to you a letter that I received from an Arab in 1987. The Arab's name is uh, it was written in Hebrew. Shachar. And he lives in Shofar, which is a very nice neighborhood in East Jerusalem. He's an attorney. He's an attorney and a professor. And I'll read the translation of the, of the part of it. To Rabbi America, despite the fact that I hate you with my blood, I respect you as an enemy. I enclose a letter to Marie. Your name is mentioned. The editorial board will undoubtedly not, not print it. So you are authorized to print a letter fully in my name. Just as you like to say the whole truth from your perspective, I would just say my truth. Despite the gap between us, I as an Arab nationalist and was a Jewish nationalist, we have a common point of view. A straw against the hypocrites and two-faced people such as Yossi Sari. That's my kind of Arab. <laughs> I prefer to fight with lions and, and with lions and wolves such as the Kach movement rather than with mice and jackals such as Shulami Baloni and Mayor Gilman. Right, tell you, he gets better. <laughs> he then sends me a letter that he wrote to Mariv in response to a letter written to Mariv by one Dr. Shaul Friedman. The letter from Friedman was printed. The response by the Arab was not printed. And this is a part of the letter from Friedman. It was in response to a television interview with Galia Tamam. I'm sure that the name means nothing. Galia Tamam is the mother of Moshe Tamam. Hashem informed them all. Moshe Tamam was a soldier who was hit, who hitched the ride at Somit Bedli, the Bedli Crossroads, which is right near Natanya, where he lived. He hitched the ride in broad daylight. He was in uniform, a rifle. The car stopped and picked him up. The car had license plates from Israel. So he didn't know that there were Arabs in it. Because when we made an effort to make to, to have Arab license plates, uh, the license plates of Arabs living in Israel differ from that of the Jews, so crime went up racism, so he was saved from racism, so he didn't know that they were Arabs. He got in the, in the car, his body was found four months, months later in pieces. They had cut his body up. His mother, Galia, was on television, and she spoke about Arabs, the woman, a mother who had just lost her son, Wolf. And this bothered Dr. Friedler. And so from his liberal humanist perch, perch high above all normal people, including God, he said the following, what would Mrs. Tamam or the Jewish community in Israel say if on European or American television they would say concerning Jews what Mrs. Tamam said about Arabs? Who more than the Jewish people that suffered so much must be alert and be aware of comments such as those of Dr. Uh, of Mrs. Tamam? And then he went, went to sleep, I'm sure, feeling very, very pious and self-satisfied. But the Arab wasn't satisfied with the letter. And so he sent me a copy of the letter which was not printed in my And I want to read to you part of that letter. The problem of Dr. Friedler and many like him is that they think that all the Arabs are children to whom you can sell fairy tales. Shulamit Amol, the Yossi Sarid, and people like them sit on land that belongs to the Arabs and speak lawfully about justice and equality. They presume to represent the humane sector that, that objects to the occupation of the uh, territories. Hanat Jafin, Haifa, 
Chicago, Lida, Romney, the Galilee, and the negative Arab land that was wrong. So what is this hypocrisy? That's my kind of Arab. I like this Arab. Because he says there is no difference between Romney and the territories. There's no difference between Haifa and the territories. And he's right. They're all Arabs. <laughs> and he thinks they're all his. He's logical. He's wrong. He's logical. I'm right and logical. Yossi 